In the past decades, there have been some very exciting development in AI, especially using the machine learning approach. So far, our AI design effort has been focusing on imitating humans with the goal to ultimately replace humans. We talk about autonomous cars, ultra high speed trading, and so on. Indeed, intelligent systems are now designed to make decisions with real world consequences. It's not just about finding a cat in a picture. It's not just about training a machine to do surgery. Instead, it's about making decisions if and why a surgery should be carried out. It is the social economic decision we make with AI that truly matters. Can we rethink how to approach AI in a more human-centered way, where humans are active participants rather than just passive consumers? In today's five-minute lecture, we will look at some of the key challenges of human-centered AI. Let's consider the following scenario. You are planning a trip to Tokyo and you've never been to Japan. You're really looking forward to a very nice restaurant. What kind of information do you need? Well, is the restaurant far from the hotel? What kind of food do they serve? The price? Is the food tasty? And so on. How do you get this information? Before you all shout Google, let's imagine that we all hopped on to the TARDIS, which took us back to the year 1980s. Yes, the 80s. Bill Gates had just founded Microsoft and this kid, he's Google's Larry Page. So no Google, not even internet in fact. Oh my God, how do you get information? Who has the information? Local residents living nearby perhaps? The restaurant owners themselves? Economists call this phenomenon information asymmetry. It deals with the study of decisions in transaction where one party has more or better information than the others. If Disney built a media empire by making talking animals, Google built a media empire by addressing the issues of information asymmetry. Let's leave this nightmarish 80s and return to 2020. What information is still hard to find even with the help of almighty Google? Well, I would like to know if the restaurant is really local or is it just a tourist trap? How busy is the restaurant? I'm not willing to wait for hours and hours just to get in. In fact, Google has some information about how busy any given shop is. Have you ever wondered how they did that? It turns out Google has the best point of interest building footprint, which allow them to know exactly the location, shape and size of the shop. Combine this with GPS data of human movement, they can derive store visits relatively easily. This is our first challenge, human sensing. To build a human-centered AI system, we need to know more about humans. In this case, we sense the patterns of human movement. Let's look at another example. How do we know the quality of the restaurant? Here, we need to sense the mental states. We can simply ask them to tell us how happy they are, or we can use some sort of affective computing techniques to infer human emotions automatically. Let's now hop back onto Dar Tardis. This time we are traveling to Kerala, a southern state of India in early 2000s. We step out into a coastal village. It's immediately clear that fishing industry is the bloodline of the economy, but people are generally quite poor. You walk around the beach and see a lot of fishermen just idling, chatting with each other. They are lazy, you exclaim. That's why they are poor. But why are they idling in the first place? As you investigate further, you learn that when returning from the sea, fishermen spent a lot of time idling, waiting for the boat owners and distributors to come collect the fish. Can human-centered AI help? Well, yeah, we can build some location sensing technology to inform relevant people when fishermen return from the sea. We can even design a system that lets fishermen mark the map when they found a large shore reducing the time spent at sea searching for fish. This will have an immediate impact on fuel costs. So problem solved, right? Wait, there is another challenge. The objective of this AI system is to improve humans' prosperity. Fishermen become more productive and earn more money. But have we considered the fish population? 
is our AI system so effective that in long run, it causes the fish population to collapse completely. And by the way, who owns this technology? What about fishermen who have no access to it? Are we not concerned at all with social justice and economic inequality? This is perhaps one of the most important challenges in human-centered AI, encoding human values to understand wider human contexts and consequences of our decisions over time. Thank you for listening.